Good morning, and thanks for joining the Frosty Sith channel today for this episode eight of the Garden Tour playlist for 2022. Uh, the heat has been killing us, and lack of moisture uh, has really put a, a hurt on the garden, but uh, we're going to take a look and show you about the changes coming up for our fall garden planting. Here we go. I think we're going to go kind of counterclockwise today and these are the pimentos uh, in this area and we've been harvesting some of those and using them in dill pickle relish. We'll talk about the cucumbers in a minute. Uh, the peach cherapitas are doing great. We're not using a lot of them yet. I need to probably start harvesting them and brining them up so that when we get ready for um, you know, fermenting peppers here in another month, six weeks. Uh, I'll have plenty of those stored up. Um, we're getting a lot more riper Buena Mulata peppers. And uh, they're still growing, still putting on flowers and looking good. So uh, the tomatoes, we just can't stay on top of the production uh, and use these up quick enough. I'm going to be harvesting a few of these here in a little bit. Uh, same with the cherry tomatoes, really. This is the second clone of the carbon tomato, and it is taken off just fine. So uh, it's probably, I don't know, 18 inches tall now, and that's only been in the ground for a couple weeks, starting to get some flowers on it there. So looking good and that's the second clone that we did this bed we talked about last time and it had been um, covered in compost and then some pro mix and it is now fully planted if you follow us on instagram you've probably seen that and uh, we got beets and uh, carrots in this bed and the beets are already starting to germinate. So you can see there that in less than a week, they're already popping up and doing good. And so they go around this end and then down the side here. So this bed, I still haven't got it amended. Um, that's no dig, all this is no dig, uh, but still need to add compost and some pro mix in this bed. And then we're gonna uh, plant seedlings that we started indoors of lettuce over here in this bed. We're also gonna prune this petunia. And uh, we don't normally grow petunias, but I'll show you, you'll see one later, a red one. And I had pruned it uh, around the edge of a metal raised bed and it was hanging over like this with no flowers and after I pruned it it's just flushed again with flowers so live and learn but we'll be pruning this one too and hopefully that'll come back and do the purple sparkle flowers. Um, the heat and bug pressure has just put a major hurt on uh, the North Georgia candy roaster although we still got one big vine here that's looking good. Everything else, the squash bugs have just decimated it and I've decided just to let it go. Uh, we do have some pretty good looking squash. So that's a big squash there. Or Georgia candy roaster. And, you know, plenty of butternuts as well. We've got... Uh, Other butternuts back in here. The El Oro de Ecuador is doing good. And I saw the other day that we have one ripened and I looked up what Oro means because I didn't know in Spanish what that meant. And I don't know if you can see that uh, golden 
pepper back there, but um, that's what Oro means. So let's go ahead and pick that. Pretty golden pepper. Uh, we've watered the sweet potatoes a little bit, and again, they're just doing great. You know, I'm not keeping them trellis trained enough, but uh, but they're doing good. Uh, one of the main things you'll probably notice is that the pickling cucumbers have all now been removed and we planted peas there before we cut the last of the pickling cucumbers. And once they started coming up, we cut the pickling cucumbers and removed all the vines so they could get plenty of light. And they're, they're doing great, even though we're still hitting highs in the 90s. Uh, we had a couple of days in the hundreds last week, 104 one day that put some severe damage on some crops that we'll see here in a bit. But uh, the peas made it through, and I think they're going to do great. We did leave two vines of the market more, and we need to get out here and harvest some, some of those and use them. The beans are doing, you know, the vines are doing great. I mean, look how thick these vines are. I mean, those are just super robust, <laughs> healthy vines. And uh, I don't know why we're not getting beans. Because I've yet to see beans. I've seen flowers, but I haven't seen beans. And we don't have an infestation of grasshoppers. I have seen a few grasshoppers, but we haven't seen a lot. Um, the rainforest peppers, again, one of my favorites. This is a clear winter for us for 2022. And I'm gonna get a close up here of some of these peppers. And we're actually gonna harvest all these red ones today and uh, make uh, chili poppers with them during the week next week, this weekend and next week. And uh, let's take a look. Tons of peppers. Still coming on. The corn is doing good. It's all drying now. Uh, we had a couple days there where we could eat some sweet corn when it was milky. The amaranth must really start to be putting on seed now. because the branches are all starting to lean out into the walkway and just they're weighty. So hopefully in another week or a couple weeks, they'll be good to go. All right, let's push through here. So the kale, we really haven't uh, had time this last week to do much with it. I need to spray it with spinosad or something because we're still getting looper butterflies on the Brussels sprouts over there that make the green worms. And I just haven't harvested any kale since last week. Um, no ripe peppers here yet. I mean, we've got plenty, but uh, nothing major going on. Um, this petunia is looking good. We need to cut it back, prune up some of these lower cucumber leaves, and amend the top of this bed with more compost. We also need to start eating the um, celery and using it. And <laughs> you see all the cherry tomatoes down there. We just can't stay on top of this. And I definitely will only plant one Super Sweet 100 next year. Uh, they are delicious tomatoes. They are just great 
right off the vine. Mmm, delicious, but too much. So, this bed, you know from last week's video, has already been amended with compost and ProMix on top. Looks like I've had a squirrel in here. But um, hopefully today we're going to get these starts put in the ground. So let's see. I think on Instagram I posted what we were starting. Um, and it looks like I might have lost a calabas, uh, cabbage. We've never had luck with these particular seeds. So that's not a big surprise. I actually started three cells of these and uh, the other two died. I cleaned out the cell, added new mix, and then started some other cabbage. I don't remember. Katerina is what these are, Katerina. And then these three are Dedon cabbage here. Can't read that. I think these are broccoli. I've got a sheet for myself. And so um, we got a couple kind of purple sprouting broccolis that are here and going in the ground. I just written over the, the labels with Sharpie and the blue Sharpie didn't stay as well as the black. So anyway, purple sprouting, purple sprouting broccolis, cabbages. Uh, we do have some leeks, green onions, not green onions, leeks, onions, and uh, chives. And we'll probably put those in that other bed beside it. That's that. And we just need to get on with harvesting more tomatoes. I still think the carbon tomato by far production wise is way outperforming the other. A couple of these, you can see there's one on the ground down there that you know, I just can't eat them fast enough. And we've been freezing a lot of them to make some rotil or salsa or something. Um, the Prudence Purple, there's a few of them in there, but very few, and they're just kind of done. This, and I think we can see it better from the other side, and I had forgotten if this was white, yellow, or red, but there are some white ones that I think are white piquino. So those will be nice in our fermented pepper sauces. Uh, we did harvest some strawberry calendula seed and I don't see any pods to show you a good example. This is the first year I've grown calendula and it took me a minute to figure out because see all these that you see, there's no seeds on them. They've already dropped. And so I missed most of the seed production but anyway, maybe later I can, in another video, I can show you that. So again, the Buena Mulata's doing great. Uh, we have picked a few of these uh, Kinstar Lemon Starburst. And see, there's a few more there that are getting ripe. There's one back there getting ripe. So we're gonna have plenty. There's actually several back there. And uh, then we'll get to this seven pot Primo here in a minute. Let's just get to it now. So these are still filling out and, uh, but looking good. I mean, and we've got plenty of them. So this one's almost ripe.
And then we've got these, uh, this raised bed, it's got the green onions in it and the Tabasco um, and this cantaloupe. And since last week's video, we pulled out 13 or 14 overripe cantaloupe. There were two that were edible, uh, but the others just real quickly ripened. And so last week's, in last week's video, I think I said I thought that this leaf pattern must be a virus or some sort of disease. And that's what it looks like. And I think that is correct because they just ripened real quickly after the leaves, all the leaves kind of got that pattern on them. I think that just forced the plant to ripen them super quick and in literally like 36 hours, they all ripened and I just didn't catch them before they really fermented. So, well, there's a beautiful seven pot. So we're gonna have tons of peppers to process and we've got habanadas are starting to ripen. So we're gonna have tons of peppers for fermenting hot sauce this year. It's gonna be great. Look at those carbons down there. It looks like I lost one to some pests. Um, <laughs> we got some big carbons. I came over here to show you this other clone which is this one here. And uh, it's doing great. So it's, I don't know, 20 inches tall, maybe close to two feet now. So that's the main garden area. I guess we didn't look at the okra. We've been harvesting a lot of okra and uh, harvested last night, so there's not a lot to see today, but this okra has been doing great, and we're still selectively, you know, saving seed from select plants to, to get the character that we want. Let's take a look at this amaranth. Yeah, it looks great. I mean, it doesn't, the plant doesn't look great, but... <laughs> I think it looks great because it's the first year that I've grown any amaranth. And uh, this one is a white grain amaranth and uh, it's doing, it's the least productive of the two that we grew this year. The other one that we grew is this one and look at it. That's a single plant. I think I talked about this in the last video. It's starting to lean now, but it may be three inches at the base, eh, two and seven eighths or something at the base, but it is absolutely huge. And it is starting to put off heads on all the branch limbs. And so uh, I'm not quite sure what we're gonna get more harvest yield from, you know, the dense planting or, you know, spacing them out and giving them plenty of room. I mean, this is, five foot, six foot wide. Uh, 
that's pretty massive footprint, uh, but it's putting on lots of heads and it still has little heads coming on. I mean, look at, at these, one, two, three, four. I mean, every little bud branch is producing amaranth and every limb has those buds, you know, branches coming off, uh, suckers, I guess, or the equivalent of suckers on a tomato. So that's great. Um, the blueberries are still mostly hanging in there. This one is starting to struggle. I think maybe it's getting shaded out by the amaranth a little bit. Hopefully it makes it. Uh, the other four are doing fine. Then here we're at the wild card bed and we've got tons of stuff in here. The peanuts taken off. This is the red, uh, petunia that I was talking about and it had no flowers on it I think a week ago or maybe 10 days ago and then I cut it and almost overnight it just flushed with flower production. The watermelons uh, and this is late watermelons so that we get them in time for fall but you can see this fruit is still going well uh, and we pruned those up so on this one plant so there are three watermelon plants in here. On this one plant, we only want to get the one watermelon because we want all the energy to go into that one watermelon. And then these other two plants have just taken a while to get fertilized female fruit. And you can see down here, that, um, you know, with this vine actually has two, has one here and a smaller one down at the end, and then there's one here on the third plant. And so we've started pruning these and pruning all the suckers that come off that don't have uh, watermelons on them. And uh, I think those are gonna end up doing great. When I removed the pickling cucumbers, the Cucumber beetles have migrated other areas. And you can see one there. So the watermelons do have some aphids, but we also have ladybugs. To take care of the aphids. So, and then we had this other vining thing and I couldn't remember what that was, but it's Mexican gherkin. <clears throat> so I went back and looked and there were two, two of them I planted there and uh, we'll see if we get something from that or not. It's more of a niche uh, product. The cantaloupes over here are receiving a little more bug pressure now that we got rid of the cucumbers, pickling cucumbers. Uh, but they're hanging in there and we're still trying to keep them pruned back. The same with this whole fence line, trying to, or not fence line, but uh, trellis, just trying to keep them pruned back. I uh, don't need, we've already harvested nearly 20 pounds of cantaloupe. We've been eating cantaloupe now for weeks. I don't really need any more cantaloupe uh, fruit. It is still setting some fruit, uh, but we're trying to nip that stuff in the bud and keep it pushed back. The pink jazz tomato is starting to grow now, so it may be two foot tall. Uh, patty pan squash is doing okay. We'll see how that goes. I don't normally grow squash in the fall, so we'll see. Looks like I may got a leaning pepper plant. Don't know what's going on there. I guess it's just the weight of all those Zapotec peppers. And these are a pretty big jalapeno. and there's tons of them. And that's what this half of the fence line is. The orange spice from Save Seed on the other end, we'll take a close up of that in a second. But I mean, those are four and a half foot tall now, and they are just loaded from top to bottom with peppers. And those are from Save Seed, and they're actually producing a lot more this year than in the previous generation from the original 
purchase seed. Uh, last year, they were really anemic. I almost didn't plant any orange spice this year, and I think they're probably going to have the highest yield, even though the Zapotecs are doing great, and we'll definitely plant them again. Another cucumber beetle. Um, the hot peppers are all starting to ripen. Dang it, I knocked the fruit off. This one is still orange and not super red, but we'll leave it. Maybe it'll ripen up in a couple weeks, and then, you know, we've got plenty of, <laughs> plenty of hot peppers there, so. These cantaloupes are doing great, and I did save some seed already from some of those early um, ripening ones. We had a vine that ripened three or four, five cantaloupe, again, in like a 36-hour period. And I've been keeping a close eye on these uh, because I don't want that to happen to these. And I think I'm going to get rid of the seeds that I've already saved this year from this harvest. And um, I'm going to keep an eye on this one because I really like the ribbing in it and I like that it's not splitting. And so even though I've dosed this a couple of times with pretty good water, these have not split like the first ones that I saved seed from. And I'm gonna dose them again. I'm in good soakings of water and they haven't split and I like that. And so I think I'm gonna get rid of those other seeds and I'm gonna save seeds from that one, maybe that one uh, we'll see. And of course they got to taste good. So I'm not going to get rid of the other seeds until we taste this, uh, because the taste on the ones we've harvested already, I mean, they're just exceptional because, but they do have a brown sugar taste to them. And so if you don't like sweet cantaloupe, uh, you wouldn't like this cantaloupe, but I liked it. I, I thought it was great. So, again, more hot peppers. Should probably do that with gloves, but. And these are putting on peppers, but none of them are, are really ripe yet. But there's lots of them on here, so. We're gonna have plenty to play with for fermenting peppers. And we've got a good base of uh, orange spice peppers going on. And I mean, every plant is just loaded. The sunlight's not cooperating with me. And we're getting some starting to ripen. So maybe in a week or so, We'll get quite a few ripening and we can start harvesting peppers and get that going. So that wraps it up for that. Uh, we'll come back and look at the fig. The zinnias have really been, I don't know if it's the heat so much because you can tell some of the flowers and plants are still doing fine, but the zinnias, I haven't watered them like I did last year and some of them have really just started to, you know, go to seed and back off from their production. And, but I'm just not gonna water. It's been so hot and dry. I'm just not gonna do that. I do need to get out here and cut some sunflowers 
uh, heads to save seed from. I've done that a little bit already, but I need these are these are ready. If I wait another week, they may be may be okay. But the zinnias, um, I should just water them next year. <laughs> Uh, this is the second round of zinnias here, and you'll see these look great, but this is the second round that we added. So if you go back a few garden videos and look, you know, those were, we just planted those from seed um, as a secession planting, and uh, they're looking beautiful right now. The surprise lilies are done. They're putting seeds on at the top, um, but looking good. We've shut down the fountain for now. Uh, we're going to be going fishing this weekend and in and out and around, and I just didn't want to deal with having to keep it full. Got a few chives still alive down there. That's great. The oregano is flowering, and the bees love it. I'm not sure if I can get a close-up of some of these native bees, but let's see if we can. Anyway, kind of amazing how many bees there are. And the honeybees are definitely competition for these native bees. Um, I'm not sure what sort of critter that is. I'm going to let him live this time, but <clears throat> on the sunflowers. The maple's doing fine. Need to come in and start cleaning out, deadheading some of the lemon balm. Uh, we finally got some squirrel deterrent up because once the squirrels finally found the bird seed was game over uh, but we did do a couple of things and the slinky was just an idea i had hopefully that'll just keep them away uh, this seems to be working so far they're not jumping from the fence yet onto these i think they'll figure it out eventually and we'll have to do something different um, these plants i mean they're still alive so that's great um, haven't pruned, the, we pruned the grape a week ago a little bit, but uh, haven't, haven't done much to it since. Uh, and so this, we're keeping the weeds under control now, and uh, we have put down some seeds that need to overwinter to come up in the spring, mostly poppies, but some other uh, perennial flowers, pollinator garden stuff. The valerian is wearing out here at the end of summer. Um, and we'll we need to come in here and just deadhead this whole thing uh, and give this grape over here a good soak because it's definitely anemic compared to the other one. The echinacea is hanging in there. So let's look at the biggest tragedy of either the heat or lack of water, I think, and that is this. And this is a cherry tree that I planted this season I think that if you go back on the garden video, so this is Benton Sweet Cherry Dwarf from Stark Brothers. And <laughs> I mean, last week I kind of jinxed myself because I said, I'm not going to worry about this anymore. It's looking great. It's putting on a lot of growth, you know, all this new growth. Um, but I mean, obviously it's not good. Now, I came out here one morning about three days ago. So this happened very recently. And this whole stick was leaning at a 45 degree angle and the, uh, the tree was leaning at a 45 degree angle. And so I'm not sure if something, a coon or something came through the backyard and damaged the graft or something. I mean, we're above the soil line with the graft, some of the mulch is near it, but, you know, I just don't know but I'm hoping it's going to make it. Um, it's still, the branches are still flexible, uh, but the leaves are definitely dry. So let's take a look at some of the other fruit trees, in particular the figs, which all seem to be doing great. So this is the hardy Chicago. Uh, this is probably the healthiest, best growing one that we have, there's a cucumber beetle. I missed him uh, right there. Um, but we definitely have figs. Good. 
and they're coming into all of you know the crotches of the plant and uh, we'll just see if any make we'll just see if any of them make by the time the first frost hits um, probably not going to pinch these this is the first year it was planted in the ground and we can always prune it once it goes dormant we don't need to force it to try and make figs or spend more energy I actually considered pinching the figs but I haven't heard of anybody doing that got him cucumber beetle all right well again just a beautiful plant and uh, putting on figs so let's go look at the other two all right so this is the brown turkey it's potted it's doing fine uh, which I was a little concerned about leaving it outside in this black pot uh, in the heat in the direct sun but it's just been doing great so uh, no complaints about it at all and I think we're going to find this a great home and a higher numbered hardiness zone so that it can actually be grown as a tree <clears throat> and not die back to the ground every year the desert king is still doing great but we have had some dieback on some things so this twig here you can see the leaves are all dried up and uh, that twig has gotten brittle and i'm not sure why that is we do have new growth coming out from the base down you know near the center of the plant um, we're putting on still some new leaves at the tops so i don't think it's going to die i hope it doesn't die um i am surprised and i don't understand i'll probably pull those leaves off in case that's a fungal issue and uh we'll go from there blackberries so much like the desert king the blackberry for some reason has started to get dried up crinkly leaves and i just don't understand that it was looking so healthy and green um i mean i just just don't know so hopefully it makes it this other one is dry as well so you can see it's getting dried leaves so maybe I don't know if this could be fire blight or something. I don't know enough about blackberry diseases to know what this problem could be or what I should do. But I should probably pick the leaves up and dispose of the brown leaves. It is still put, this one is still putting on some new growth shoots even after these browned. Uh, it's putting on new growth shoots. And so that's positive. That makes me think it's not gonna die. But uh, now we gotta get these beds ready and get some things planted for the fall garden including these lettuce plants so lettuce and spinach all right well that wraps it up for this week's uh, garden tour stay tuned for more content and if you don't already follow us on Instagram you can follow us at frosty sith and if you like it give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't and make sure to click the bell so that you get notifications every time we update new content here on the channel and as we leave we're going to take a bite of this el oro del ecuador gold pepper and see how it is It's sweet. There was zero heat in that pepper. Now that one I got a mouthful of seeds and some of the white pith.
sweet, sweet pepper. And there's a little bit, tiny bit of heat, but not nearly a jalapeno even. I mean, not even close. But there's a tiny bit of heat on the back end, in the back of the throat, in the back of my tongue, but it's just very, very mild. So anyway, enjoy gardening, friends, and remember, whenever you can, get up, get out, and live a little. See ya. I missed anything.